Hi everyone, welcome to my masterclass. Um, my friends of uh, the A Squad asked me if I could teach you something about how to produce hard style. Um, it's the first time for me that I do this kind of stuff. Uh, but I hope uh, to give you some pointers on how to proceed with your hard style projects. Um, I will do another take tomorrow, uh, but today I want to show you the basics uh, how I begin my uh, tracks. Um, and for that uh, I use uh, Studio One. Um, uh, uh, most people use uh, FL Studio, uh, but Studio One has a better workflow uh, in my case for me. Um, so let's get started. Um, I've loaded up a, a small uh, project with some uh, instruments and sounds already loaded. Uh, you can uh, view this as a playlist editor in FL Studio. Um, uh, Studio One doesn't have uh, uh, a pattern editor, but uh, just uses a, a playlist. Um, well, when I begin, I normally use uh, uh, the chords, and the chords are the notes that contain uh, your melody. Uh, for example, if I want a nice chord, I know that uh, something like this is nice. Uh, something uh, uh, behind that. Uh, I use uh, Silent One um, for this, uh, just the, uh, the init preset, uh, so menu, preset, clear init. You have a very boring sound, uh, but that makes it easier to get the feeling of the chords because of the, the, the sounds that you make or create or design uh, have a specific feel, and if you use an init preset, you get the, the yeah. You don't have that, uh, that that kind of stuff. Uh, well, let's begin. Um, what? Well, yeah, okay. Chords were nice, uh, so let's uh, draw them in. Um, if you see, uh, this is similar to uh, the FL Studio uh, piano roll. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, based upon uh, the quarter um, uh, beat, so uh, four measurements. Uh, so this is why I have four bars here, uh, for 13 until 17. Uh, let's duplicate that to something like this. Okay, that's nice. Um, I'm gonna add a bass note. Um, the bass note is going to be used later on for um, the kick, for example. Um, I like to place it in my chords. So 
that's uh, that are the chord chords. Um, I have some presets that I use a lot. Uh, one of them is uh, a preset in silent uh, made by Noise Shock. It's a very cool sound. Um, sound without any effect. Um, but let me explain something. Um, Let's do that later on. Um, what I can do now is I can place it. Uh, I'm gonna mute this one and I'm gonna play it. Very cool. Um, but for a chord, I want it uh, to be a little bit more repetitive. So I'm gonna make it shorter. better uh, but I like it to have a little bit of more energy a little bit more uh, change so I'm gonna make it The, the where your melody, your top melody resides on. So the, um, the melody is going to have uh, some sort of sound. I'm going to build it on top of that. Um, okay. okay. But the chord of course sounds a little bit dull. Uh, so what you need is a reverb and um, a delay. Um, what is best practice is to create a separate bus. Uh, you can do it in FL Studio as well. Create a bus uh, where you put a reverb on. So I can add a bus channel. Uh, in FL Studio there are only bus channels. In Studio One you also have a different kind of channel called FX channel. I'll be using that one. Uh, but uh, in FL Studio you can use a bus. And you can reroute it with, uh, 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 with functions in that DAW. Uh, there are tutorials about it as well. Uh, but for now, I'm going to create a reverb. I'm going to add a Valhalla room. That's my uh, one stop uh, pre uh, 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 reverb uh, kind of stuff. I've got some, come, uh, you can see some presets that I use based upon. What I saw other producers do, uh, and this way the head and the reverb is very long, uh, with a decay of six seconds um, in uh, one thirty-third of milliseconds, um, hundred percent mix and a high cut. Um, so if I route the chord to uh, the lead reverb, I've got some reverb, so it sounds fuller. But it's a little bit more not too good, so I'm gonna add an Oxford inflator. A little bit more presence, and then I'm gonna use a flat filter. So to cut out the low end and the high end. Uh, and the high cuts. You can use uh, the parametric EQ of FL Studio for this as well. Uh, around 8 and uh, let's see, 250. You can see that the top end, top end is, uh, is removed. Um, I think it's a little bit too much. So I'm gonna. There we go. Um, I'm going to do the same for uh, a delay. I'm going to use the replica. It's my uh, favorite one. 
Um, listen to it. And what's um, good practice is to add a low cut uh, around 200 hertz and a high cut around say, 7. So it sounds a little bit more at the back. Just a little bit more feedback. Okay, very good. Um, you can do, you could do the same technique. So you can copy the effect of the high cut and the low cut on, on the delay. Uh, you can also, uh, what I like to do, is add a compressor. Um, Apple Studio has a, a lot of, it has a built-in compressor. I'm not sure which one. Uh, but they all basically work the same. Um, uh, you can um, put it on default uh, f at first, but I'm gonna uh, make the sound of the lead. I don't want it to interfere with the reverb, so I want the reverb gone when I play the note. So I'm gonna add a so-called sidechain. Uh, there's a button for that as well in FL Studio. Uh, I'm gonna place it on the compressor of a lead reverb. So if I do this correctly, you should hear that it's being isn't playing when I'm playing the note. So oh, sounds uh, fairly okay. Um, I can use the um, same chords for string. I'm going to put it in octave up, that's better. So that's uh, uh, 8 bars now. Sounds pretty dreamy. I used the VPS Adventure uh, plugin for this one with the default preset of uh, uh, pad and one padding. You can use any plugin you want for this, of course. Um, uh, what I miss in the saw chord is it's really sawy, so I place uh, I have an organ chord chord here. Um, I like to put it on top of uh, my saws. Uh, it's made in um, spire. Uh, it's actually just a simple um, waveform with the brass and an organ in it uh, on top of the saw. Um, so it gives it a nice edge. So if I place my pattern on top of that, it sounds a little bit fuller. Um, what I like to do, and it's what you should do as well, is create uh, buses for every type of element in your track. Uh, so I create uh, uh, a bus for my percussion, a bus for my leads, a bus for my chords, a bus for my kicks, and uh, a bus for my screeches, for example, and vocals. Uh, so in FL Studio, you can just uh, add an, uh, you can create a new bus. Uh, let's call it chord bus. Um, and I can route the two things to the chord bus. In FL Studio, there's a small icon that you can draw a line to the second uh, bus. Uh, I will move the uh, effects I placed on my saw chord on the chord bus. So uh, the, in that way, the organ chord has the same effects. So it gives us the more complete feeling. 
sounds okay. To glue the, them together in the bus, I use a comp another compressor. Uh, I use the Pro C for this. Um, glue it a bit together. Okay, very good. Um, then I always use, in a, I'm a euphoric guy, so I always use several kind of elements. I use uh, a bass line, uh, a mid bass line, uh, a chord, a top chord, a top lead, uh, and strings, uh, and several sounds uh, besides that, uh, pianos and that kind of stuff. Um, for now I'm gonna do the saw bass and the sine bass. I can copy my um, chords, uh, no, that's not true, I'm going to copy my strings. And I remove everything besides the bass notes. So I have this, so I have this. This is my mid bass, and this is my sine bass. You can hear that the sine bass has a little bit of a pitch isn't really handy in this, but let's skip it. Uh, the sine wave is uh, actually just uh, a little saw, um, in this case, with a, a triangle. That's a saw and a pulse, a oh, saw and a pulse, I'm sorry. With a very low octave, and uh, I believe there's also a sign that isn't used. I can edit, of course. Um, since it uh, has a, a little bit of effect, I'm gonna make all the notes very short and I'm gonna make it repeat. I think that's better, but I'll, I'm gonna keep it uh, low. Um, okay. And I can do the same for the, the, the saw base. I'm gonna make it uh, F and C. I'm still not sure about it, but okay, I'm gonna And this is a G. And I'm gonna copy that piece it here. Oops, I'm gonna do now. Okay. So it's um, less quick, it's more slow, I like it better, because I can use a saw base to do something like this, I'm going to copy all the notes, I'm going to place it before, and I'm going to place it lower, a little bit of more drive. Place it up, up, up. Uh, now I have uh, two uh, bases, this is standard. Conflicts a little bit with each other, so I'm going to place Q on top of it. I'm gonna 
do something similar on the saw base. I will only then I'm gonna make this uh, birds and this uh, or something. So it's more better. Um, of the, the rhythm of the chords are very static so I'm gonna have to adjust the rhythm later on uh, but for now we have a little bit of basic uh, basic stuff um, uh, let's see um, well what I've if I'm gonna make some sort of intro I'm gonna, um, well, let's let's get there I'm gonna go further. Um, let's start here. And let's create a nice arpeggio. I'm gonna add an instrument. I like to use um, Spire for this. Um, Spire. There's a default I like. Something like that. I'm gonna uh, disable the delay within the plugin and, and, and the reverb as well. Because you want to have the reverb uh, be, be the same throughout the whole track. Because if you use different delays and different reverbs, it can be a nice creative effect, but it creates chaos as well. Um, so for better mixing, I use uh, the same reverb. Similar like reverb, just everything in the right space. Um, what I do with arpeggios is quite simple actually. I pick up the string, string sections, and then I create a simple uh, loop of the notes. Uh, something like this is sufficient. Let's see if it's to like it quicker. And I copy this one. Something like this. This is called the harps. Um, well, that's a fairly dull sound. Now, so I'm gonna um, make a, 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 let it go to the reverb and the delay. But 
but I think I could use a more better effect uh, by adding another um, delay. as a sort of a beginning of the track. to make a little bit of horizontal progress and then uh, a vertical one. has some nice ones that currently don't have them, I see. And we'll sound now. We got, let's see. Uh, let's use one from the summers. Uh, you know. oh. uh, you can use any piano sample or feast the uh, what you like, of course. I thought I have a nice one, uh, but... Okay. Um, of course it's a little bit uh, dull, so I'll create a fur. Let's create a better delay. Thank you. 
Okay. And just placing the cords again uh, on top of this one. Um, so I can actually just copy the strings very quickly. Um, going to use the, um, the bus for this because I want it a little bit more of you know, you know. It's very long. use a bus for this but Uh, but it will be when we place uh, the kick under it. Um, 
charge or something uh, like this. So. That's for later on. Um... I've used um, saw base here, created earlier. Uh, the attachment does a, doesn't have a filter, so you don't hear anything. So I'm gonna do a pass through the right. The punch of the of the the sound. It's, it's, I like to have that. sampler uh, so you have it under a key and you can draw mini notes um, it's handy if you want a rhythm uh, of some sort uh, let's see, let's needs a reverb uh, but I like to have it a little bit uh, with a bounce back so I'm gonna place it on 200 seconds so it goes on the offbeat We're gonna begin with a melody uh, or some something like that, but uh, that's for another tutorial. Um, please let me know if something like this is handy and what you need more. Thanks for watching. Bye.